Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to our movie club. Today we continue with Better Than Us, episode 10. And in total, it's 16 episodes, right, Ichori? 16. Yeah. So I yeah. would say we just, you know, pass the point of no, no return. <laughs> well, do you understand what is the point of no return? Yes. Could you explain? Uh, when something goes the way that you cannot change anymore. <laughs> you cannot get back. Yeah? Just imagine, just, just think about an astronaut, right? So it's a popular <laughs> idea in the movies, right? So you 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 have some kind of amount of fuel, right? And you yep. you have a point in the universe in which you cannot return back because it's not enough fuel anymore, right? So you have to you, you have to return before the point of no return. So we are already at this point. <laughs> so <laughs> episode 10. And no enough fuel. Not yep. not, not enough uh, <laughs> Yep. <laughs> yeah. Usually the halfway point, but it, it could be different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. do we have anyone new in this episode? Uh, we have Stas Suponov. Yep. Uh, this is Glyph's diver, and uh, he was pretending to be a, a officer. Police officer. Tishri wrote a good word here, crony. Do you know what those mean? It's kind of, let me try to describe and Tishri corrects me if I'm wrong. It's kind of a friend, but you know, in a in a, in a sense that you are in the same gang, the same gang, in the same deal, right? So we are doing your black deals together. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Partner in crime, Tishri wrote here. Yeah. <laughs> and another co cohort, cohort, how you pronounce it? Cohort, yeah. Cohort, it's the same, right? Cohort, same, same, less criminal, but still the same idea. Yeah, it's a good vocabulary. Well, especially for you and your school friends. So you are cronies, I would say. <laughs> 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 okay, who else? Um, Lahisa Kuhas. Mm -hmm. uh, some woman with a terminal illness, and she was, uh very good with hacking uh, yeah she was a hacker right? yeah okay she was a hacker and garanka who's garanka uh owner of the rx4 <laughs> so, uh two one bot <laughs> two zero okay interesting fact maybe you know maybe you don't know but if the um, family name uh, ending in ko, it means it's Ukrainian guy. So Garanenka, <laughs> it's it's not a Russian name, it's Ukrainian name. So this, ah. <laughs> I think it's coincidence there, but you know, just let you know how to distinguish people by, by family name. Okay. Okay, good. So let's go to the questions. Let's see what do we have. Sergey, would you like to take first one? Why does Svetov tell Varlamov that uh, he must work with a homicide detective? Uh, as I remember, uh, Svetov uh, was uh, the boss of Varlamov and uh, uh, he started to explain that uh, we have a lot of problems, we include a lot of consequences, uh, consider consequences of your actions earlier, and that's why we have to add... Uh, a uh, homicide detective uh, as a uh, helper for your investigation because uh, we we would met some problem with the crimes uh, in the future. I say, maybe I'm wrong, but they they had a conflict between uh, Svetov and Varlamov. They discuss about it, and uh, maybe Svetov uh, wanted to control Varlamov. Yeah, and uh, Elza, do you remember, Sergey, what kind of department uh, Varlamov belongs, or what it was? Uh, the Department of uh, Crime of Robotics. Yeah. Cyber. Yeah. Cybercrime, I would say, right? So, cyber, yeah. Yeah. Cyber. cyber crimes. Yeah. Cyber crimes. So, but now, do you remember, in the last episode, uh, Sergey, there was a shooting, right? Yeah. So, so it's not anymore about hackers, right? It's not anymore about uh, cyber. Uh, Crimes. So that's why I think they got this real detective <laughs> from, from Homosy Division. I, yeah. I think so. 
Yeah, remember in the hospital room, there was a uh, Yuri was a patient and a guy went there to kill him. And then Varlamov and that guy looked at each other and there was a shootout and that guy died. So now homicide is involved in this cyber crime case. So this crossover between two departments. Yep. Yeah. Last one, I have a question. <clears throat> so are you saying that the uh, homicide division is involved because the detective was shot, not because uh, Arisa is being uh, accused for murder? Correct. But not because Varlamov was shot, because Varlamov killed the other guy. Oh, all right. So once Varlamov okay. killed the thug, now there's this case has a murder in it. Yeah. Yeah. Now yeah. to Varlamov, the robot's a killer too, but Svet, uh, Svetov doesn't acknowledge that. He doesn't believe the robot killed anybody, but now we have a real dead body. So he has to get homicide involved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Next one. Would you like to answer the next one? Yeah, sure. Describe the first meeting between Boris and Georgie on the overpass. So they agreed to meet uh, to exchange Arisa with the family of Georgie. Uh, and Boris left the family in a, another van to make sure to take uh, Arisa first. But he couldn't take Arisa because he learned that Arisa cannot, uh, cannot be turned off. Mm -hmm. So he said he it is dangerous to take her this way. So he rescheduled their meeting for 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 later. Yeah. Um, and talked the family with him again. Yeah, but why it's important? Why he rescheduled the meeting because of this? Why did not he get Zarisa, you know, in an acting state? Because he knows that Arisa is going to free herself <laughs> and kill them all. <laughs> this <is> awesome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, okay, another question. Why he believed that uh, Arisa does not have this switch? Because she uh, attempted to murder him before, and he knows that uh, um, bots don't do this, don't kill people. So he believed that she, she's special. She can kill him if she wants yeah. to protect her family. Yeah, but but I mean, when um, George told him, you know, there is no such a switcher, you know, to switch he, he off. Why should be mm -hmm. this? It would it would it would be a lie, right? Because the the bot doesn't lie. She said yes, I don't have a a, a bot a button to switch me off. Yeah, I I think it's an interesting point, right? So she still trusts Arisa when they state some facts, right? So the kind of he he thinks that you know bots does not lie. It's interesting. Yeah, right? but they kill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I find this funny because just now they just learned that uh, they sold bots don't kill, mm -hmm. but they kill right now. But they still believe that bots don't lie. They cannot lie. Or, or maybe, or maybe he didn't want to take the risk because he's risking his own life. Yeah, so he yeah. wanted to play it safe, maybe, and reschedule yeah. it for later. Yep, yep, exactly. That's a, mm -hmm. that's a good point, though, Ivan. I, I didn't catch that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, number three. <clears throat> uh, describe Laha's visit with Dr. Valas. Mm -hmm. uh, Laha was in the hospital, and she was very rude with uh with employees mm -hmm. and Dr. Valaj uh they had an appointment and he said he uh he um uh, found found out that she hacked the system and made her first in in queue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but but she she was uh, forty seven, mm -hmm. and he put her back to forty seven place. Yeah. Uh, did, and, she, did she wrote that she had a terminal illness? Do you understand what is terminal? Uh. Uh. You can die of yeah. it. 
Exactly. So it's it's very serious, right? So it's uh, uh, your life is on stake, right? If you have this, okay. Uh, anything else about money? Uh, uh, doc Doctor Valash said she could uh, pay eighteen million, and she will be first in the queue. Yeah. I only wonder what is was is the dollar price or ruble price or. Yeah. I don't think it said what the units were. I, I was wondering too, <laughs> rubles or what? Yeah. yeah, because it's dollars. It looks like over uh, price for yeah. whatever for, for for whatever service it is. If it's rubles, so it's uh, like uh, two hamburgers. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm joking. It's not that bad, but it's not. <laughs> It's like 100 less, 100 times less. Yeah, <laughs> yeah understood. <laughs> Remember the moment uh, when Larissa met uh, some uh, med medicine lady and uh, medicine lady uh, told uh, her, please uh, cover your mobile phone and other device. I don't understand why we have to cover our mobile devices in uh, medicine, uh, in polyclinic, in, in yeah, airs, hospital. but in, in hospital. Uh, maybe I understand why we earlier uh, had to cover and the switch off our mobile devices in the fly, uh, before the flight. Maybe sometimes uh, we had the problem with the take off uh, some flights, but What's the problem to use uh, this mobile device in the uh, hospital? What's the problem? I don't understand it. And they have they <clears> had <throat> an aggressive con conversation uh, be between each other. Yeah, I, I don't know exactly. Will your phone interfere medical technique, medical electricity or not? I suspect no. that it's not the case. But I suspect they do this, you know, to... <laughs> to reduce uh, kind of noise in these uh, places. It's my uh, my understanding. Yeah. Especially if, like, say you go to the dentist, right? And the dentist is, <laughs> you know, in your mouth, and suddenly your phone goes, <laughs> whoa, you know. It, I mean, he could hurt you. So that's why they want the all be quiet, so there's no... <laughs> No surprises, no shocks. <laughs> I think that uh, I think that uh, using the mobile devices in uh, in dentist is a problem because I can't to use my my mobile device when the doctor came into my mouth. It's a problem, right. unfortunately. Yeah. But <laughs> the dentist uh, use uh, use uh, screens for children when uh, children. Uh, came to the doctor, they switch all the cartoons uh, yeah. in the screen and they uh, <laughs> watch the <laughs> cartoons yeah. in the uh, dentist. I remember my childhood when I went uh, to the dentist, the dentist uh, uh, take off, off my hands and uh, I, he wires me and uh, without anesthesia, uh, anesthesia uh, take took my mouth it's a horrible it's a uh, horrible movie it's a lot of uh, blood a lot of crud. but it's i remember all my life the dentist and uh, uh, you can check and you can ask other soviet union children uh, their most horrible place it was the dentist <laughs> yeah, standards are <laughs> very different differently yeah yeah that's why it's the same in, yeah. in your place. Uh, you are talking to me? Yeah, yeah. I, I saw you are muted, so unmuted. So I, I, yeah, I was just saying that I agree. That was uh, my nightmare to go into the dentist. Mm. Now it's now it's different, right? Mm, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I'm old enough. I'm courageous. <laughs> I went to a, a government office one time for a concealed weapon permit to carry a gun on my body hidden. And we're all sitting in the waiting room. And there's a sign that says no cell phone use allowed. <laughs> and I thought it was, you know, silence your phone so the noise doesn't bother anyone. So I'm, I'm reading my email. 
and I hear this voice say, sir, you can't use your cell phone. <laughs> and I said, but th there's no noise. I'm just re quietly reading my email. Sir, you can't <laughs> use your phone in the waiting room. And, and then I, I saw the voice was coming up and there was a hole in the wall and a person was talking to me through a <laughs> hole in the wall. <laughs> and I went, what the hell? And we weren't even allowed to look at our cell phone. It had to be put away, invisible, not in our hands. I, I went, what the hell is wrong with this office? Oh, crazy. But it, it's, it's very common um, thing. So as an immigrant, I go to many, you know, <laughs> governmental buildings to make my paperwork. <laughs> and most of the time, you know, many of them have special, you know, work uh, how it's called, I don't know, changing rooms, you know, for, for cell phones. So you put it here and then you go to the building room. So they don't wow. let you go with your phone. So you cannot make a photo or record something or do something. So they're afraid of this somehow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's a surprise for, for, for the first time as well. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Uh, it was, um, it was number, number four, right? Five. five yeah. yeah. I think. No, four. Yeah. Vasan, could you please help us with number four? No, we did four. Homicide division is assigned to work with Varlam. Varlam. Uh, uh, homicide division. There, uh, there was an IT guy, I think. Uh, he was assigned uh, to work with him. But uh, surprisingly, he is a double agent, something kind of... He is working with the bad guy, so. Oh, who, who? Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 And <laughs> do you think he was a real police officer, or just he pretended to be a police officer? Hmm. I don't know. He's just an office clerk. Something. Uh, he looked like that. He doesn't. Uh, it's like he. Uh, he doesn't look like a. A policeman who got training from the uh, from the field. He's just an uh, office clerk. Mm -hmm. well, so this was a short question. Could you please take the next one, number five? Yeah, describe the scene was a natural topic of voice. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. Svetlana uh, arrived to the office and uh, she demand she demands for uh, no fulfilling the promise uh, I don't know, the man uh, made, had made. Um, but he said um, he will return uh, the bought child uh, on the next day uh, because uh, the bot was damaged by the uh, no, uh, liquidators. So, mm -hmm. Uh, it had to be uh, fixed uh, and so that it will be the same as before. Yep. Will, will, they, will they fix the boat? What do you mm, I don't know. He, he asked his friend to fix the boat. Yeah, no, not, not asked. He ordered, ordered his friend to fix the boat. Um, he somehow agreed uh, and I hope so, uh, because he also know how Svetlana is, you know, how much she is into that robot, you know, she had a relationship, so. Yeah, without, without, this, without this bot, she will be a problem for everyone, right? She yeah. Unstable and a problem for Boris and for, <laughs> yeah. for I mean, for Victor, for Masla, for everyone, so they are all needs to fix the bot, right? Yeah. yeah. But do you remember there is a kind of subplot, there is a love triangle, right, with uh, Maslov. Uh, mm -hmm. So he has own motivation <laughs> to yeah. fix the bot. Yeah. yeah. Good, good. Okay. Uh, Bola, next one, please. Uh, describe the scene at Cyber Crimes HK. Do you know also what it does mean? Headquarters. Uh, so it's kind of headquarters that causes Varlamov to get hacked. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Varlamov uh, and his colleagues were 
uh, thinking about the case, but uh, brainstorming mm -hmm. about the case. Good. But uh, Vahlamov felt bad, but he said he wouldn't test. And uh, everyone else was worried for him. And he asked for coffee or tea, and this corny of Gleb, Suponev, told he told told the whole friend that he would add some painkiller, but it was not. Uh, it was not a painkiller, it was poison. Something dangerous, they got it, right? So something that makes uh, him bleed more, right? Blood sinner, actually, bro, blood sinner. So it's like aspirin, right, actually? Aspirin is a blood sinner? Yeah, aspirin has the same effect, yeah. yeah. So do you listen to blood sinner? So, you know, your blood, it can be like sick, right? So like a, almost, you know, like a gem, right? And may, maybe sin, so like with water, right? Mm -hmm. So you can get some medication and it will be more like this or more like this, right? Sometimes doctors need for them patients that uh, blood like circulated better. So they add aspirin or something, so your blood, blood is uh, sicker, right? Sine, sine. Yeah. And when you're going, when they're going to do surgery on you, they have you stop any blood thinning medicine for at least two weeks before mm -hmm. so when they're operating you're not bleeding like crazy yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. so they kind of you know literally stop your blood <laughs> to to, <laughs> not, not, to to prevent that you lose too much during the operation and yeah. he, and he just had an operation so it's important for him this this happened to me one time because i i had some skin cancer here Mm -hmm. and they were going to basically cut it out in the office. So I was told to stop my blood thinning medicine like two weeks before I came, mm -hmm. and I forgot. So he started cutting it out, and I started bleeding like, bleeding like crazy, and he, he had to keep you know dabbing the blood every couple seconds. And he said, did you stop your blood thinners? And I went, <laughs> I, I forgot. <laughs> He said, okay. So he, you know, did the best he could, but I was just, I can't believe he kept having to stop to get dabbed the blood every couple seconds. <laughs> and it was dangerous for you, right? It was uh, very dangerous. It was a minor, a minor operation, just a small area, but the blood just kept coming out and he had, he couldn't see what he was doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good, good. We understand. Oops. Oops. Yeah. So this crony, he actually poisoned him, right? Mm -hmm. in, in a way. Okay. Sergey, could you please answer the next one? Describe the scene between Suponev and Vlad uh, that results uh, in someone's death. Uh, uh, Suponev, uh, Suponev is the crime, yep? Yep, it's a crony, right? A crime. Yeah. Gleb, uh, that's Gleb, Gleb's partner, yeah. Uh, Suponev solved uh, the most uh, his problem to avoid in the visit of uh, Varlamov to the place where they uh, plan to meet Arisa and Sasolov. That's why they uh, went uh, with Vlad. <clears throat> when they started to uh, take in uh, uh, brony, <clears throat> brony, brony wa waste... Uh, Me metal jacket, I would say. A metal jacket, and uh, they had a small conversation about uh, uh, support, about jacket, and uh, about potential uh, uh, bullets. Uh, uh, suddenly, uh, Vlad understood uh, uh, that maybe uh, Suponev, uh, it was the cause of Varlamov's problem, and he asked to give him uh, some painkillers. Uh, Suponev uh, got the painkillers uh, and uh, Vlad understood that uh, Suponev tried to uh, to 
kill of Varlamov, and they had uh, the conversation Superlev uh, and Vlad uh, take uh, took uh, gun, and they have a conflict, and uh, in the result of this conflict, Superlev uh, killed uh, Vlad suddenly. So what was was the main mistake of Vlad? What do you think? <laughs> Uh, he trusted uh, he trusted to Supanev and uh, Vlad uh, didn't have a metal jacket and uh, uh, Vlad uh, was not a, a homicide detective and he didn't uh, expect that some to investigate right. other types of crimes, not a homicide, but uh, Supanev. Uh, was ready to meet some problems. That's why he was better ready to conflict. He was faster. Uh, he was more confident. That's why I think Superman uh, killed Vlad. Yeah, Vlad uh, uh, the most problem, Vlad didn't get, didn't ready to kill Superman. <laughs> Superman uh, ready to kill uh, Vlad. <laughs> Yeah. And it's always uh, as a case, right? When between a criminal and you know, and a citizen, right? So you you don't expect nothing, but criminal is ready to attack you. So it's always a problem. But I but I think another mistake that he did not uh, kind of share his uh, sus suspicions, right, to anyone. So he suspected, but did not tell anyone. So it's uh, now it's there, right? Now nobody knows about this painkiller situation and everything. Stupid, yeah, stupid. <laughs> why didn't he tell her? I think, uh, no. you know, I'm just gonna say, I, why didn't you tell Arena on the phone? You know, okay, go ahead. Yeah, I think it was uh, uh, because what I did not experience to uh, to uh, work with this uh, kind of conditions because uh, uh, he works in the office uh, with the crimes uh, in, in front of. Co computer it's not a, a real people yeah exactly different job right so if you send me you know to some metallurgy station i will die here in a moment right because i, <laughs> I used to, to work in another place <laughs> okay good uh that's all i think uh, for this uh Nesma, could you please take uh, number eight yeah <clears throat> sure Describe the second meeting on the overpass between Georgie and Bart when Glib shows up. So, as we said before, they rescheduled their meeting uh, to, uh, for, for Bart to have uh, more precautions. So, he was back with uh, stronger handcuffs. He thought that would prevent Risa or somehow. Uh, and uh, when, the moment they exchanged or started to exchange, they put the handcuff on Arisa's hand. She pretended that she's uh, like, I mean, <laughs> yeah, under control. <laughs> that was nice. Um, and then Gleb showed up because he had the, uh, uh, the location before. Mm -hmm. And he was ready with his equipment to shoot them. But he didn't think of Arisa and her abilities because she <laughs> once she suspected something dangerous, she started to make that well, I don't know ultrasound or I don't know yeah. what kind of sound she produces. Uh, that uh, stopped all the devices to work and everybody was uh, on their knees because it was a severe sound. And uh, easily she took uh, the handcuffs of her hand, like <laughs> a piece of cake, <laughs> um, so that they could escape. Yeah. And Gleb uh, couldn't do anything. Yeah, but tell us more about this equipment that Gleb used. Uh, I think that was kind of a vehicle that can shoot, uh, depending on, the, on his voice order, the activated voice uh, order. But uh, of course, it, it didn't work because of the sound Arisa did made. Yeah, yeah, it's an interesting but, idea, right? So you you can work alone if you're supported by you know some kind of assassin system. So you can, it's kind of a backup, right, for you, a partner for you. 
Yeah, he looks like he doesn't trust his men any longer, so he, he wanted to depend on his own devices. <laughs> Sergey? Uh, in my opinion, the weapon uh, which Gleb used now uh, didn't uh, now don't uh, look uh, uh, fantastic because uh, mm -hmm. for me this weapon looks like a drone uh, with guns and uh, um, uh, you can uh, control this uh, using a controller or voice. It's not problem. And now it looks like a drone uh, with the bombs uh, with the guns and uh, you can use. Uh, uh, with touch screen, it's a usual weapon now for me because it's a uh, movie from uh, 2018 now to 2023. Uh, imagine how progress uh, ca uh, is going fast. Yeah, exactly. Only five years <laughs> now, it's not a fantastic. Yeah, so if I understand you correctly, so they tried to make a fantastic, you know, sci fi system. But nowadays we see it, you know, in news report. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> every day, every day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, there was a famous there was a, a famous news story maybe five years ago where Israel programmed a yeah. gun somewhere, and when a guy came out on the street and walked by, the gun identified and shot him and killed him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was all AI controlled, no human intervention. Yeah, and this kind of uh, interest. Yeah, we will see more of this. I am very sure because this <laughs> uh, this field, you know, called computer vision, when uh, when AI kind of recognize what what they see, so it's kind of progr it progress very fast. So nowadays, yeah. uh, you know, they can find a man very quickly in a in a megapolis. So yeah. it's. <laughs> It will be, it will be more stories about this. Yeah, the only thing about this scene that was fake to me is, sound does not affect electronics, so mm -hmm. I don't understand why this system got, uh, got affected unless it uses sonar to measure the distance to target, which doesn't make sense. It's got a camera; it can see them, so. Yeah, that that didn't make sense, but you know, it's a it's a movie. <laughs> yeah, they, they had to show it somewhere, right? So we can understand yeah. that Arisa made some kind of jamming way. Right? So she you she she used herself like a jamming device. But how to show it in the yeah. movie, right? So the, you need to show something. So they used <laughs> voice. <laughs> but see, but EM. Electromagnetic waves wouldn't wouldn't incapacitate a human. Yep, exactly. Only audible would incapacitate a human. So yeah, they kind of had to to cheat here and kind of combine electromagnetic and audible together. Yep. <laughs> okay, and it's 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 uh, again it's not uh, something uh, that we don't see now, right? So now we see a lot of rifle rifles that called uh, anti drones rifles and that use exact this uh, technology EM pulse so to to land the drone. So we can see this as well. Yeah, <laughs> crashes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wasans, could you please help us with number ten? I think we covered number nine. But ten, what is the final test of Georgie Bars and their companions? Mm, yes, and they are fleed from the uh, from that location. Uh, and Bars were, uh, got into another car, and uh, Georgie uh, uh, and his son and his girlfriend. Were and in their in one car and uh, Hala and her daughter and, and the new guy you know, who is going to be in the relationship with her wife you know <clears throat> I don't know uh, that guy uh, they were they three were in another car so they didn't want to go back to Georgie because. Uh, anything can harm the family so that guy wanted to move on with the uh, Anna and uh, her daughter 
Did you notice something strange about uh, Igor <laughs> in this episode? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Igor always wanted to press that uh, he is in love with uh, that girl. <laughs> uh, but th- that girl didn't give a, you know, uh, get down. She said, like, oh, your family is unlike he. She always mention, mentions uh, bars in her conversation, but uh, Igor was uh, does, doesn't care about his family. He, he always concerned about the girl. Yeah, so we clearly can see different focus, right? So, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I think it's kind of believable. So, so it's a, uh, well, I, I have seen many, you know, young men who totally lose their mind because of, because of the woman, right? So, right? So forget about work, family, about everything, you know, you might starve, I don't need anything more. And I have seen much less women with the same approach, I would say. So my my personal experience. Yeah, a red flag to me is when a couple get married and the wife listens to her mother more than she to her husband. That's a problem <laughs> to me. Yeah. Nessa, please. Um, actually, I understand that he is uh, so in love with her. But as I remember well, he was bullied in school back when he was a student, right? Yep. So he is... So, I mean, too confident uh, to ask her to be uh, her number one priority. I guess uh, people who are uh, used to be bullied don't have that much of confidence. He's like, uh, you've got the best man. I'm the best man in your life. So you don't need to, uh, uh, to care for your brother. I'm here. This is actually, did it make sense to me? Yeah, I, I understand your point. I, I would even uh, add to this uh, point that, you know, in general, Igor, you know, he was a nerd a few <laughs> episodes ago, right? So, so a nerd who knows nothing, who don't have kind of uh, power or friends or something, and now he's in, is in inside of the actions, you know, some kind of gangster shooting over him. Something happened, someone stole his family, and he he's not caring about this, right? He's caring only about this girl, you know? So, so it's okay, gangsters, like, so, like, you know, it's my usual Monday, but, you know, but I see you, so, I, I know, like... My usual Monday. So, if, if, I, if I was in his foot, you know, I would scream in some way in basement, right? So, what happened? What is happening? No, but he's fine. Remember... He always backed down from Boris. Boris always intimidated him until yep. that one night when Arisa, he took Arisa to bot.net and she was bartending. Remember, she was bartending yeah. and Boris showed up and got a screwdriver and he was going to attack Arisa. That's mm-hmm. the first time that he stepped in front of Boris and said, no. Yep. And mm-hmm. that's kind of when he got his confidence. <laughs> To pr- mm-hmm. when he was protecting Arisa. Yeah. Yeah, on, on social media, they, they call this a W situation. He's got a W, like a win situation. I don't know. Okay. I'm not sure. No. <laughs> we have to make our research for this time. Yeah. <laughs> but, but suddenly, suddenly he became brave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because because scenario demanded this, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, and the last one, uh, uh, Victor. Whoa. Can can you help us? Number eleven. Uh, what is the final status of Victor at the end of this episode? Yep. Um, Victor, as I remember, Victor uh, was sitting in his home. Uh, with lights off to show how serious it was <laughs> and uh, he was looking for a trip mm-hmm. but he he wanted to run away how how do you understand so, that it's not just a trip that it's an escape because he 
because I didn't know even Kante is it he <laughs> wanted to travel. <laughs> <laughs> so some kind of um, let's say less known country than yes. But the the the, the problem is uh, that he is looking for country that don't have agreement with uh, Russia to send criminals to each other. You know, that's, uh, uh, <laughs> so you can go there and say, you know, I'm fine. So I will start my new life and my new career here. I think now uh, he would have more opportunity to go <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there are some countries have an agreement called extradition, extradition. Tre treaty. And that means if, if a, an American criminal goes to Russia, and the American police say, Russia, can you capture guy and send him back to us? Okay, we'll do that. That's <laughs> called extradition. So he wanted a country with no extradition treaty. <laughs> <laughs> and if you if you do this, you know, maybe customs, you know, they understand why you are going this way. <laughs> yeah. Can, can you arrest him and send him send him back to us? <laughs> no, we don't do that. <laughs> yeah, but Sergei's joke was about different case, you know, because of the current politics and current situation in the world, many countries break the agreement with Russia <laughs> about extradition. So now it's easy, you know, to let's say Germany used to have this uh, extradition agreement, but now it doesn't work. Temporary seize it, I, I don't know what, what is the word for this. Temporary uh, sus suspended Sus suspension yeah <laughs> so we will well, see you know we're not yeah we're not required to send him back but you know since he's a russian <laughs> we'll be happy to send him back <laughs> as, <laughs> as a courtesy yeah <laughs> Sergey, please uh, yeah i remember from this episode uh one interesting moment when uh we could see the argo between victor and maslow uh the first time maslow uh, didn't cover uh, his uh opposition to victor mm -hmm. and uh, as earlier and the first time he uh, started to argue with him about future about Svetlana about Boris and he uh, wanted to show more arguments uh, in front of Victor because uh, I think uh, Maslow understood the situation that uh, uh, Kronos can't produce uh, 1,000 bots, Kronos can't uh, have uh, the space for producing, Kronos cheated uh, in, do, during that uh, <laughs> Uh, concourse, uh, there's a competition, and Maslow more uh, clever, I think, that uh, the Victor. Victor, in my opinion, more brave, more confident, but Maslow looks like a diplomat, mm -hmm. and uh, a diplomat and technic guy, but uh, I think that uh, in the next uh, episodes, uh, maybe we uh, would meet the conflict between those two guys. Yeah, so Victor, how we would call this? Victor is losing his power, right? I, uh, because uh, all the basement of its power, right? Arisa and his uh, father-in-law, they are all kind of disappearing, right? So Victor is nobody soon. One, one thing with the bridge was Gleb and Saponif. Saponov said, hey, Gleb, let me show you something. We got a problem. And he opened his car hatch, and there's a dead Vlad there. Yep. So Gleb goes, bam, and shoots <laughs> Saponov. <laughs> Why did he do that? Yeah, good question. At first, at first, I thought he killed him. But then I realized he only wounded him. Why? What do you think? He wanted to help him to explain the situation to the police because exactly. now we were a team and we were attacked. <laughs> my my coworker was is dead, was shot to death, and I I survived. Exactly. 
<laughs> so now they will they will tell the judge that Vlad was the one who poisoned uh, Varlamov and attacked Suponev, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, interesting. interesting. And, so, and Suponev didn't even get angry. He just <laughs> got up and said, we got to, I got to pull down. <laughs> I got shot. <laughs> He cooperated. <laughs> he was very calm. I, I, I was impressed. Uh, yeah, yeah. Then, you, know, he, you know, damn it! Why'd you shoot me? You know, he he understood right away. <laughs> yeah, I think Gleb played like kind of risky game in a risky way, right? So this uh, guy, he could shoot him back, just uh, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if 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 he did not understand what is happening. On. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's make some slides. So, in general, guys, what do you think about this episode? Was it a good one or I don't know? Yeah, yes. yeah, it's good. Good one. A lot of shooting, right? Some kind of yeah. <laughs> double agents. <laughs> so, so it's a good one. Yeah, I agree. Nesma, what do you think? Uh, I think it was a good one, but uh, with some stupid points, just <laughs> like the one that Teacher Lee uh, mentioned about the ultrasound that the racer makes, and also. About that uh, new guy in the from the hemocide division, mm -hmm. they didn't even bother look at his own documents to make sure that he is from the hemocide division. Yeah, he said, that, "Okay, hello, I'm yeah. a detective. Okay, come in." Yeah, that was a little suspicious to me too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you you are right, but you know, I I just thought for a moment, never in my life I check a document of any of my colleagues. <laughs> <laughs> so they just went to the room and say hello i'm i'm you know a boss of this department give me this paper so i i, I say there is there is a paper took it. <laughs> take, take it right so probably yeah. I'm, i i i should check more documents on my job please yeah. <laughs> okay let's uh, do some slides thank you Vasans, for slides uh, all the slides always uh, collected by Vasans, so <laughs> that's why i always <laughs> prepared to talk about them, <laughs> let's say. Okay, Vova, could you please start? Tell us about this dark, dark room. Uh, this is the home of George. Uh, I think. I don't think so. It's Kronos or something, or some kind of. Uh, I don't. This is a this is a security camera video. Ah, okay. Of the warehouse where George was waiting for the show to start. Remember? Yeah. So the, I, I'm looking on this uh, table, and we have a mirror with lights, so it looks like something for actors, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So it, it's uh, as a tender. Okay. And what happened now? Um, liquidators. I should summon. Oh, the. Um, I don't know. Okay, let's talk about these doors. Can you see white, uh, big doors? Mm -hmm. Can you see this, uh, how we call it, knob, knob? I don't know. This handle. Mm -hmm. So, do you understand why it's that big and how it works? Uh, you need to push on it. Uh, you need to pass it. Mm -hmm. So, so it's kind of for emergency, right? If it's if something wrong, you can push pull, push bar actually. So, so you can use this push bar to open the door, even if it's, it's locked, right? It's usually in the, some kind of warehouses and in the industry places, I would say. Okay, what about these pipes on the ceiling? What do you think? Why are they? Uh, they are for water or for heat? Mm -hmm. But do you see the silver color with the mm -hmm. tin? Right? Why? Uh, that is for water? It's kind of uh, insulation, right? To, pre to prevent heat loss, I think. Sergey? Uh, sometimes uh, the uh, insulation uh, uses for insulation the magnetic. Uh, uh, because we have uh, other types of cable, telephone, internet, uh, electric cables, and some electric cables can uh, mitigate uh, ma magnetic waves, and these magnetic waves uh, could uh, could stop to work uh, the telephonic cables and internet cables. That's why in 
they use ecran uh, for co cover elect electric cables. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a kind of a shield, right? It's usually road uh, shielding from EM waves. So you protect, yeah. you're protecting your electricity cables from interfering from other fields. Correct. So, so insulation is heat related. Shielding is electromagnetic radiation related. Okay, yeah. but I, I never use it. It's called shielding. In Russian, it's different. So I, I would say screening or something like this. If I use literal translation, but shielding is a good word. If you've if you've ever seen a coax a coax cable, yep, yep. it's used for old TVs, right? All old, old uh, technology for TVs. Yeah, if you ever cut if you ever cut the wire, you'll see that there's a Cape, there's a copper wire in the middle. Yep. And then there's a a metal mesh around that. Mm -hmm. That metal mesh is shielding. Good. Good. To protect the current inside that single copper wire. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I think this uh, picture already paid me enough vocabulary. So shielding, <laughs> of course. <laughs> 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 nice that we, cho we choose this one. <laughs> okay. Uh, Sergey, could you please describe this one? Yeah, in the uh, dining room of Victor's house, and uh, we can see a robot. So I, I forgot his name. And mm -hmm. uh, Svetlana uh, with black hair. And on the table, uh, we can see a, a bottle of wine, a glass of wine, a juice, some boxes with gifts uh, from tender, uh, and other types of uh, food for breakfast. And uh, behind here, uh, we can see a ventilation system from uh, kitchen. From, uh, oh. oh, yep. It's a oven or oven. It's something that, if I'm correct, oven is something that we put something into the oven, but the thing on the top is a stove, right? Correct, correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. So on this ventilation thing, I don't know how we call it. It's just a vent, I think, for oven. Actually, do you have them? So it's a, from the ceiling, this white uh, sink. It's to reduce smell from the oven and, you know. Oh, yeah. Gases. Yeah. yeah, we call it an exhaust hood. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Exhaust, well, like in the car, right? So exhaust system, like in car. Yeah, in it has a fan that sucks air in and blows it out the roof. Yep. Exactly. So when you cook, sometimes you get you get grease and oil in the air, yep. and it burns your eyes. So the exhaust fan sucks that oily, greasy air up, and it doesn't make your eyes burn so bad. Yep. Good. Yeah, and uh, I, I want to add uh, that the wines and type of foods looks like and uh, not usual things for this kitchen because this kitchen looks like and not good for life, not good for conversation, <laughs> looks like a museum and uh, without people. And I can see some pictures, some devices uh, in kitchen, but it's not good. I want uh, I want to go out from this kitchen. <laughs> so, yeah, I have a joke, you know. I, I see the same kitchen just behind you. Uh, yes, and I have a <laughs> <laughs> ironic. <laughs> you can uh, you can you can trust me. Today, my girlfriend uh, invited lady who uh, wanted to put some pictures in my, in our kitchen because uh, it looks like this place. <laughs> and uh, he, he told oh me, I want to put some pictures around me. I can't live in the, uh, in the white. <laughs> okay, to add some colors, right? Add some colors and uh, to reduce yeah, whiteness. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Okay, yeah. It's uh, 2023. It's not uh, popular anymore to be white. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Nesma, what about this one? Or oh, I can change the slide if you don't like this. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's okay. Uh, this is when Gleb was showing Vic uh, the kid's uh, bot was, was, was broken. 
And the Vic was <clears throat> so annoyed because everything went wrong. And mm -hmm. he was blaming Gleb and his men uh, because he pays a lot for them, but they can't make anything right. Yep. Oh, yeah, I'm supposed to, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> supposed to explain the setting. So this is a garage, right? Parking garage. And I can see this is a, a very normal parking garage, nothing to, to detect future here. Uh, even the cars are very normal. Uh, yeah, so strange symbol on this uh, column, I would say. I can't recognize it. Right? So for handicap. For handicap. the first moment, I saw this for disabled people or something, okay. but it looks strange. Sometimes what we do in America is we'll, uh, to remember where you park, Mm -hmm. They'll they'll put letters and number coordinates. So if you park in this area, you're at A13. Mm -hmm. So when you come back to find your car, A13, you can kind of find your area better. Sometimes they put pictures there also. Like at Walt <laughs> Disney, at Walt Disney, you might have a Mickey Mouse in one area <laughs> and Pluto in another area. So maybe that's some kind of a, a insect <laughs> symbol yeah. or something. Uh, I can't tell. <laughs> it, it's a good idea, I think, because sometimes I lost my car in <laughs> yeah, because you can see several floors, several areas, north, yeah. uh, west, north, and yeah. I and <laughs> when you uh, leave your car, you remember, yes, A so chin. <laughs> when you uh, spend three or four hours in the supermarket, <laughs> and oh my god, I don't remember what the place. Please. Actually, when I go to malls, big malls like this, if I am alone with yeah. that, with my husband, I would go back home with a taxi because it's <laughs> going to be hard for me to find the car <laughs> and yeah. also get out with it. Some cell phones have an app now. Remember where I park. Beep. <laughs> You know, so it can help guide you back to your car. <laughs> I, I always make a photo of this sign, so ways sitting or something. So I make a photo and then I, I look in this photo. So no memory anymore. It's a, 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 a decade of smartphones. I always message you, my but... husband with the number uh, because yeah. this is now his own yeah. problem. You get the number, <laughs> yep. it's your problem. <laughs> yeah. yeah, make a note on your phone. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I. I was going to say, Ivan may remember in Star Trek IV movie when mm -hmm. they went back in time and they landed their ship in a park and <laughs> yeah. they made it invisible. When they left, Kirk said, remember where we parked? <laughs> yeah, I want to add, uh, can you see the uh, circle detector? Uh, uh, above these guys, what do you want? What is it? Circle, what? Sergei? Circle de detectors. Uh, yep. Yeah, I think it's uh, small, small detector, right? Yeah, no, it's, it's a detector. It's not a small Emerald? detector. It's a detector which show uh, the three places uh, when oh, okay. uh, it's red, uh, you could understand this is uh, uh, not free. When you light uh, green or not light red, you can understand that I have a, a free place for my car when uh, you have a lot of cars. Yeah, so sometimes, you know, when you go to this park, you cannot see where are three places. So you can see green and red uh, lights, and green lights means there's a free places here and you go there. Yeah. Really? I've amazing. never seen that before. I've never seen it. Oh, yeah, probably advanced, it's be amazing. Advanced Russian technology. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a good idea. Yeah, it's a good idea. Well, yeah. Mickey Mouse area is better than this. <laughs> 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 okay. uh, I, can, I can see some people behind, uh, behind and I think this is storage of bots. It looked like that in first series. Uh, good point. Good point. So it looks like a boxes for uh, bots. 
exactly. So we have seen them, and Arisa was is bo is box like this, right? So probably, yeah, maybe a charging charging station, right? Maybe yeah, charging station from episode one. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Or advertising, you know, we have these bots available. Choose one, you know, the Adam <laughs> series, the Eve series. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, it's, good one. It's odd, yeah. yeah. Let's find something else. Uh, Basans, would you like to describe this one? This is a CCTV, uh, not a CCTV camera image. It's a surveillance camera monitored by the AI, I think. So mm -hmm. he is uh, giving commands uh, to the AI uh, to check that uh, the range of you know coverage. To mm -hmm. check the coverage of the area, I don't know, Wi Fi connection or something. So, yeah, uh, it worked very well. And uh, whatever he commanded, the AI obeyed him and uh, shot. He said fire, then uh, the robot shot the particular selected object. Uh, so, yeah, he, he was just, you know, reversing his uh, mission. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so nothing fancy here. It's the same kind of uh, summer house with uh, it was a grave right here for for bars. So it's the same piece of land, and it's written here system activated. Nothing more. So it's just <laughs> <laughs> very minimalistic design, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> If this if this program uh, uh make a mistake, it can kill correct. Yeah, exactly. So uh, let's say you just got assassin system, right? And you test it. Would you stay exactly in the <laughs> <laughs> target target area? <laughs> I would. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the aim may not be calibrated yet. <laughs> <laughs> or you you could be, you know, just a beginner user. So you you press a random button, and now you are the goal, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Last one, please. Uh, I, I believe that Glib is using primitive devices somehow compared to the future. We couldn't even see a Terminator among his equipment. Uh, yeah. It's just a primitive vehicle that even at uh, when he was chasing a race uh, and uh, the vehicle went out of service, when when it came back, I thought it's going to kill everybody randomly because uh, it's out of order now. It's out of control. Yeah. So that was primitive somehow. Yeah, remember that normal robots can't harm a human, so he had to come up with a, a less... You know, a, not an AI system, a less capable system, so it didn't have those restrictions against it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, and without remember, smart, smart chips, they can record your crimes, right? Yeah. And yeah. remember, remember, you could select your targets. It did face recognition. You touch your targets. Him, him, and him. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, when you reboot, does it remember that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we have a few more slides, but it's the last one, right? It's the last one where he's uh, choosing. So it's written here Solomon Islands. So some uh, country uh, placed in Melanesia, I never heard about this, in southwest of Maldives, I guess, because they are so popular with salmon. I Solomon guess. Islands, yeah. Uh, Maldives? No. Maldives are near India. I don't think, I think the Solomon Islands, are they near Hawaii or Australia? I can't remember. It's written in, in Pacific Ocean. It's written here. Yeah. They're little small islands. They're not very big. I, I thought the U.S. owned them, but I, I think they may be independent now. China tried to buy them one time. China wanted to buy the Solomon Islands from them. <laughs> and the, I think they have a, a, a native king or something. And he said, no. <laughs> no, thank you. Yeah. But I always think when people, you know, fly or run away to this island, what they are going to do for the next 10 years? I think that it's, uh, one year on an island can make you commit a suicide, I think. 
<laughs> yeah, and you're completely dependent on ships to bring you resources. If there's another pandemic, you could be <laughs> stranded there with no food coming in and have to eat fish every day forever, you know? Yeah. <laughs> no well, milk, you know, no meat. Yeah. But he's he's looking on the pictures, I think, of this hotel on the left, on the right side. So some boats, uh, I don't know, sand. Oh. Yeah, he wants sandy beaches like Florida, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he can sip his pina colada <laughs> by the beach. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Uh, so, you know, we are, we are different people from different kind of, kind of countries. And I think that when we're talking about vacation, immediately Russians, all the Russians have a stereotype. It must be, you know, an, an island or, you know, seashore or be, <laughs> so, yeah, beach. Yeah. So only this. But I don't know. Nesma, in Egypt, what do you think about vacation or, you know, a given place? I guess uh, a place with shopping like Dubai or something. Because uh, I live in a coastal city already. So I wouldn't <laughs> think of a, a place of sea or shore beaches or something okay. so i would think of traveling the world exploring people's cultures and stuff like that but nowadays i don't i don't think this way i just want to keep my house and think <laughs> it out and teacher lee living in florida right so nowhere to go teacher lee. you are already in this place i'm in paradise <laughs> <laughs> I think I think uh, we have uh, for teacherly one opportunity to go to Alaska for skiing, for snow. It's a good, yeah. a good place for rest because uh, when you live a uh, cool life in hot uh, climate, uh, you, I don't know, you uh, would uh, want to change yeah, some the picture yeah. on, on, from, from your window. Yeah, changes are good. Yeah. Vasas, what about you? What is your ideal location spot? Where you go? Yeah, Goa is the first place. So, sorry, what one? Which one? Goa. Goa. Yeah. So yeah. beach, uh, sand. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Goa is a coastal region in India. So it's a Atlantic Ocean, if I'm right. Uh, Goa. It's called Goa. Three three letters. Oh, Goa. Yeah. I never yeah. heard of that. Okay. Yeah. So it's very popular for for downshifters. <laughs> so, okay. Okay. <laughs> as I heard, as I heard, because I had many people who said I worked too hard last year. So for the next year I go to Goa and we'll be smoking weed there. <laughs> yeah. So the Indians can say we Goa to Goa. <laughs> <laughs> Goa is like uh, you know what is uh, Thailand for the global visitors, you know, they okay. always plan to visit the Thailand, but the plan is in uh, it hmm. fails eventually, you know, <laughs> that's like Goa is like that. Uh, yeah. Well, pray that America doesn't find out about Goa or the tourist uh, agencies will send everybody there for <laughs> vacation and they'll become overcrowded and trashy. <laughs> <laughs> and expensive for those yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so goa benefits is one that you can spend a month here like for 15 dollars <laughs> wow, <laughs> wow. Yeah. It, maybe not in this year but it's what i heard like five years ago so it was so okay okay thank you very much for discussion brilliant discussion as always thank you very much i i would ask uh um Teacher, could we make a two uh, episodes for the next time? You know, so I I, I could not make uh, next Sunday because I'm traveling next Sunday. So can we like uh, take two episodes? We will have more time to watch them. Yeah. Two. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Two and, two episodes, but two weeks from now. Yeah. 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 So we will uh, kind of two to, <laughs> to make the same okay. pace to keep the pace. Right? <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Bye bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye everyone. Bye.